So, uh, first of all, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Oscar Marin. I'm a senior manager with the Intelligent Automation Practice uh, at EY. And uh, very excited to be here. I was in Forward 2019. It was a wonderful experience. And I'm you know, really happy that we're getting back to getting together and talk about our experiences in church knowledge, right? Like, so from that perspective, uh, really, really excited to be here with all of you guys today. And um, when I was trying to come up with uh, the topic for, for this discussion, um, there has been something that has been in my mind for the last uh, couple of years and, and how we're interfacing with our clients and what some of those clients' imperatives are in terms of automation. We know that there is going to be a lot of external pressures that is going to drive the business in the need to uh, innovate, right? Um, and one of the things that we're hearing more often is, I need to do this like by yesterday, right? We need to do it very quickly. And then always the topic of RPA comes uh, uh, into play around, okay, maybe I can use RPA bots to help me innovate and help me do this faster, right? And sometimes when we're trying to do, to do these implementations uh, at a fast pace, we're running into the trap or maybe not uh, choosing the right approach of uh, driving this automation, I'm sorry, these innovations with RPA. And, and we make some mistakes that are going to introduce the concept of technical debt, right? And then if we are, uh, for example, trying to present a, a good transformation that is going to be somewhat supported by RPA and we're in the front of a architecture review board, you're always going to get this pushback of, you know what, maybe I can do this in my system of record. Maybe there is a different way in which I can drive this portion of the automation. And, 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 and the challenge always is when you're trying to try to understand how long is it going to take, everybody knows like it's, it's going to be several months, right? Uh, or, or you know, sometimes even years. With RPA, we always have the ability to be very agile, very quick on how we're going to be doing that. The other piece that is also uh, really important is even if you have a very streamlined uh, IT landscape. And what I mean about that, there is always going to be a bunch of system of records. There is multiple ways in which you can interface with those systems of record. Um, the challenge is if those system of records are already very optimized and um, streamlined, there is a high degree of customization that goes into those systems to make it work and operate the way the business needs. And whenever you're trying to introduce a change, it's going to take a long time, right? So sometimes, Although you may have access to create an endpoint to a store procedure in a database, there is going to require a lot of uh, effort to make that happen, right? So that is always one big challenge. And, and speed becomes a, a little bit of, of a problem on how that can be uh, addressed. Um, and then uh, the other thing that is uh, very important um, to design these automations, you also, or, uh, or, or to design a, a scalable automation, you also need to consider about the user experience, right? In the end, regardless of your building like a back-end automation uh, that is going to be running unattended, there is always going to be the ability to interface with uh, business users, right? Uh, making sure that you're determining a way in which by, by uh, designing your process that is going to have a really good experience so it can build trust on how the automation is, is going to be working, right? Um, like I was saying, even if you're dealing with the most efficient, most streamlined IT landscape, there is always going to be certain uh, areas that you need to gather data that is not going to be available, whether you're dealing with a very uh, old legacy application that might be uh, like a terminal service, sometimes you may need to go into an external um, website that doesn't have any type of API. That's where the concept of RPA is going to be very, very important, right? And, and there is uh, multiple considerations that, that goes into determine how to do uh, that, right? So, so one thing that is going to be very important is make sure that you, you define a single purpose on how these uh, uh, areas can be orchestrated uh, together. And, and, and this is where um, wrapping the, the concept of a sequence of activities through RPA and wrapping that into a microservice is going to give you that flexibility from an architecture perspective in which by having like a central console that is going to be managed by the business users, you get to 
have a little bit of plug and play on how you're going to be uh, uh, orchestrating these, these processes. A good example of that might be that uh, you're, going, you're getting pressure from your clients to do your business a little bit different, and then you're required to launch a new service. And for you to do that, you need to interface with a bunch of different legacy applications. Rather than trying to automate and do a huge transformation of your end-to-end -end process, you may have the ability to just pick a, a, pick a simple uh, set of activities that is going to be automated with something like RPA, for example. And then you wrap that around a service and, and with an, uh, an, an orchestration layer that can be provided by UiPath, you get the ability to plug and play. And you're going to say, what my uh, solution is doing today when my user is invoking this action is going to be driven by RPA, right? So you have like the concept of the service, and then you can stack those. If at some point a better capability comes along, you just remove that endpoint from the service, and you plug in whatever new comes along, but the user experience remains the same, right? What the users are doing uh, doesn't change. What is changing is the implementation. And, and what I've noticed with, with my clients is RPA is becoming that capability. And, and I'm seeing more enterprise architects come to terms with the, with the concept of, yeah, I can probably try to build APIs. I can probably try to customize my underlying uh, databases. But they're coming to terms with, RPA can give me an, uh, a good uh, implementation uh, that is going to be scalable, that it can be quick, and is not going to introduce a lot of technical debt. And again, I keep coming back to the concept of technical debt for the fact that you need to wrap it around the right uh, structure to make sure that it's scalable. And, and that's why in the, in the title, I was talking about the concept of microservices because that's what it is, right? Like we need to start thinking about RPA can be a sequence of services that can be orchestrated into a, into a larger end-to-end uh, uh, -end process automation, right? And I know I've been talking a lot, and when I'm excited, I probably talk a little fast and I move around, uh, but maybe if I show you a little bit uh, what I'm trying to, to uh, describe. So you can have your central console, and it could be any type of web application. This can be uh, UiPath apps. This could be whatever you like, right? But the important thing is enabling the user experience. So by having like a two-way integration, I can execute a command on, on, on the UI. It might trigger an unattended bot. It might trigger an attended bot. It might trigger a, a process running in the back end, and then it's going to bring the results back to the user. And, and I know the video probably ran a, a little quick, but the situation is for the user, the action that is taking place when they click a command button in the screen is always going to be the same, right? If, if I later want to replace that with another um, service, I can do that. The user experience is, is, is going to remain intact. And that is very important as we're considering how to scale. It is going to give us the flexibility of scale is going to give us the flexibility of uh, introducing new services. And again, keeping in mind the speed is going to be very important, right? Um, and, and then the other uh, area for uh, enterprise architecture that uh, you're creating a single purpose uh, automation. And, and that's one of the things that is, is going to be very important. And again, for you to make all of this work, there is a uh, set of considerations. Um, so, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm an architect, right? And I'm a technical guy, so I always like to come back to the concept of uh, uh, diagrams. But uh, you may have a central user web console. And again, like I was saying, this could be any type of uh, console that, that you desire. Uh, we were seeing some examples in the main stage today on how you can use something like Microsoft Teams uh, to do these type of integrations. Uh, you can use any other type of vendors that are available. It could be something like uh, ServiceNow, Salesforce, UiPath apps. The thing is create like that central console that is going to drive the orchestration. Once you have that, then you're going to need the aid of an API broker that is going to give you that two-way uh, communication in between your RPA bots and then the central console. At the time that I uh, wrote uh, this uh, presentation, I didn't know about the two-way uh, implementation that is going to be released with uh, Cloud Elements uh, and the, the integration services of UiPath, but this could be also done with the integration services uh, from, from UiPath. And then you get the ability to actually start deploying these single-purpose automations that are going to drive the overall orchestration. And we've seen some examples in which 
um, we can embed uh, RPA into programs that are pretty large. It is going to give us the ability to deliver the value in a matter of days, not weeks or months, uh, that is highly scalable, and, and, and you get like instant results. And, and these are very welcoming with uh, enterprise architects that are you know, struggling a little bit with the concept. And we're seeing, again, these architects being more welcoming of the use of RPA, which is uh, pretty refreshing, at least from uh, my, my different discussions. And then just to start wrapping up a, a little bit on, on how to put all of this stuff uh, together, a few design considerations that are really important uh, to, uh, uh, to bring to light. One is, um, it, it is, it is going to be very important that you have the ability to segregate your automations in a way that they're going to provide a single purpose, right? If you try to make your application too complex or your automation too complex, it's going to be very dif difficult to wrap that around in a, a service uh, endpoint. So again, uh, very important to make sure that as you're designing, you're thinking this piece of my automation is only going to be doing that. Think of a sequence rather than, that, than a workflow type of, type of situation. Then uh, it's very important as well to consider how these automations are going to communicate with the different systems, right? So uh, you need to have a layer that is going to keep track of state, uh, and, and again, like I was saying, we have implemented this with custom API brokers in which a signal is sent to the broker, the broker keeps the state, send information back to the bot, the bot does the work, send a signal back, and then back to the, uh, to the web applications. Now with uh, the UiPath integration services, you get the ability to do that, but that is also like a really key component. And then the other piece as well is, we have run into use cases that require a lot of volume, right? Like, uh, think about thousands of transactions, and the expectation is that the response time is going to be near real time. And, and you can try to do that by uh, creating a queue item in a queue, and, and, and you're going to be uh, having a, like an army of bots doing the work. But the other thing that you need to consider as well, how can I do this happen with attended automations, right? So if this is going to be, be uh, being consumed by uh, humans, right, like you can have uh, the tray with the automation that is going to trigger the work, uh, and you can use capabilities like RoboJS to make sure that you're triggering, triggering that automation and get the, the value uh, quickly. And then the other piece is, as you're working through designing of these solutions, keep in mind that uh, you need to design for high concurrency, right? So, so always think that uh, you might be using uh, a couple of bots today, uh, but uh, you may need to scale to thousands of, of different bots. So always keeping in mind those four considerations has been uh, very important to give us the ability to scale. And again, it's all about always keeping uh, in mind what the end game is, is going to be. You're not going to be able, in most cases, to try to automate or innovate by changing all of your uh, existing uh, system of records you're going to need the aid of other capabilities like RPA in, in this case. Uh, it's also important to consider what the user experience is going to be to build uh, all of this. And uh, the other area that is, is going to be uh, um, very important by keeping track of what the end game is going to be, the end result, so you can incrementally make improvements. And by incrementally making those improvements, you're going to get the ability to minimize the technical debt. In the end, there is multiple definitions of, of technical debt. To me, technical debt is having the ability to make changes in a way that's sustainable by, uh, by the underlying platform. You have the ability to make a change and nobody's going to notice uh, any degradation in performance, nobody's going to notice that now my application is harder to uh, support, then you're dealing uh, with technical debt in the right way. And I think that RPA has been one of these capabilities that have not been considered um, by uh, enterprise architects and, and is delivering a lot of value. And again, speed uh, is going to be uh, very important for every business. And then the other uh, key consideration as well is you can go fast, you can do it in a way that is scalable, that can go through high concurrency, and you can do it by minimizing the technical debt. So again, uh, this is what I have uh, for you guys today. Uh, I think that with the new releases of UiPath, all of this is going to make more sense, especially around their integration capabilities. 
and, and great to be here. And uh, hopefully this was of use for, for you guys. Thank you so much.